Clay, as this episode features Mark Ralston, famous actor mm. Mark Ralston, who's known from movies such as Aliens and Shawshank Redemption. I'm glad that this episode didn't end with Morgan Freeman coming over saying that he thought those were the worst moments of Archer's life as he's uh, as he brutally meets his end. That's my favorite scene in Shawshank is uh, Andy's getting like gang raped for a year and then Morgan Freeman just goes, I do believe those were the worst days that, uh, that Andy spent in Shawshank. So I, I should hope so. I, I have so. also been known to understate things. <laughs> I never asked him about it. However, stay away, California. Don't come near here. Uh, Mark Ralston is the the uh, the actor in this this episode called Canamar. I wouldn't have recognized him. I had to look it up. He, he looks very yeah. different. Um, he he sh- he looks different in pretty much everything I've ever seen him in. Like I I didn't recognize the name. You mentioned it before we started. You mentioned, oh, he's he's an aliens, the hard ass alien with Vasquez. I'm like, oh, right, right. And there's like three or four other movies that I know fairly well that he is in would not draw the line between any of those characters. Yeah. Yeah. He's it's he's um he's got a like a malleable, forgettable face or something, which is fine for mm. a character actor. He's not, he's obviously been working successfully and everything like that, but he he blends in. He has a little bit of prosthetic in this one, but not enough to really confuse you. But anyway, those nice high cheekbones in this one. That's, that's right. It's the uh, the aliens from Insurrection with their face stretching technology. He's been he he went through half of a session. Let's take a break. We'll play a clip. We'll come back and we're going to break down Canamar. I'll see if I can access navigation. You ever fly a warp ship before? It's harder than you think. He's right. You hit the wrong control, you could overload the plasma manifolds or shut down the antimatter containment field. We'd all end up a cloud of ionized gas. You're a pilot? A damn good one. I'm a smuggler, remember? Canamar is the 17th episode of the second season of Star Trek Enterprise. It came out on February 26, 2003. Written by John Sheban, directed by old uh, Star Trek director Alan Croker. In universe date specifically is unknown, but it's 2152. In this episode, Archer and Tucker are mistakenly arrested and placed on a prison ship bound for the infamous penal colony of Canamar. Is Is the bad guy named after the director? Isn't the bad guy's name Kroger? The bad guy's name is... Mark Corroda. 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 Okay. Which is his first name. His last name is Loren. So Corroda Loren. Ah. <laughs> this is it's basically Con Air on Enterprise, yeah. right? I was gonna um, say more like Con Air Mar. Yeah, Con, Con Air Mar. Maybe that's what the maybe that's what the pun is, actually. I wouldn't be surprised if uh, that's actually the pun. That's Here's a, that's something I would do. I would absolutely do that. I was trying to come up with a uh, a good lead into this. It's always mm-hmm. like I spend the first half hour before we start recording trying to think of like how you can actually originally go into something after we've done this 500 episodes. Uh, this was the first episode where the la- I think this is the first episode this has ever happened. The last line of dialogue knocked the score down for me by a whole point. And that's oh, really? I don't think that's ever happened. Like the just the last line of dialogue in an episode i've been let down by the last five minutes or something where i'm like oh jesus this is all like a clusterfuck this is the first one where archer very pointedly saying the moral at the end (laughs) so annoyed me that i'm going to take a point off of the score just because of it it was strange i'd never had that happen to me before that's funny because i actually didn't mind that at all i actually kind of liked that last line um but I guess now that you say that, I can see why it is a little bit on the nose. Uh, it's just uh, Enterprise trying to have its cake and eat it too, where yeah. it's like that. The episode is not about that, really. Like, right? It's, that's what I was going to say. It's not. It's not about that. That's just. That's just like another conclusion he draws on the way out. Yeah, on the, like on his way away, it's almost like he he's that. Whenever you uh, get into an argument with someone, and then you spend the whole day thinking how you were going to retort. It's almost like Archer walked yeah. away, and then he's like, "Oh, oh, I've got it. I got to go back and say that to this guy." And he does, and it's the jerk I, store called. <laughs> They're out of you. The ocean called George. They're running out of shrimp. His wife has what is it? His wife. His wife is in a coma. <laughs> One of my favorite scenes. Um. Because up to that point, I thought this was a generic action episode, but a fairly good generic action episode mm. of Enterprise. So I was yeah. I was positive on it in a very middling sense where I was like, oh, you know, if Enterprise is going to do this, this is not a bad 
action episode of Enterprise. There have been worse episodes of Action Enterprise, and this one's okay. But that last line just they were try like they tried to do something and I, I didn't respect I would have respected it more if they just said this is just an action episode that doesn't have any meaning to it whatsoever. Hmm. I uh yeah, I actually th- I thought this was one of this is probably my favorite capital E episodic episodes they've done in a while. Um it's not anything special as far as the plot or whatever, but I think it's just it, it's done really well. Uh, I thought the the characterizations in it were good. I, I liked the uh, you get a little bit of racing against the clock type stuff and a couple twists toward the end in the story to keep it interesting. Um, I loved the scene when they open the door and and the Enterprise guys come in, you know, guns blazing. I thought that was good. I, yeah. I wasn't expecting that. Um, yeah, I, I just thought it was it was it was well done for for a for the sixth or seventh version of Trip and Archer are in a pickle uh, that they're not prepared for. I thought this was one of the better, if not the best, one they've done. Yeah, they do do that storyline a lot. It, at this least, one, at least uh, Tuck, at least Trip doesn't spend the whole episode being tortured like he usually does. Yeah, yeah. He's, well, I mean, he's being talked to death. They so could consider that torture true. by that guy. By one of the more disgusting alien designs I've seen on, <laughs> on any Star Trek. It's not quite <laughs> as gross for me as that one from the Data episode where the guy's got like holes in his face with eight rings. Oh, around right. Him. Yeah, the rings going around. Yeah, and uh, most but, toys. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but those like boils on his forehead and that shit hanging down from his chin were just and he's 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 like playing with the stuff that yeah. hangs down. <laughs> extra extra gross <laughs> those are apparently uh fishing lures is what they glued to his face oh, really? which i thought was interesting <laughs> yeah um i thought that actor was really good though for that he role was. he's pretty yeah. perfect in what yeah. he needs to be uh I thought that this one benefited from i thought that all of the characters were fairly well drawn even though mm. You know, you, you kind of get a head fake because the prison guards are just generic militaristic alien race of the week yeah. on Enterprise. And what? so you, you think you're going to get stuck with them, but then they actually con air the thing and you're stuck with a much more interesting group of aliens who really maybe aren't all completely well drawn or well crafted as a like a individual character. But they the actors play them well enough that you feel that they're separate people. Yeah, when it started, I thought it was going to be another... Uh another uh, uh, evil government situation with some sort of uh, or another another militarized government pressing down too hard on the people they, they govern or something like that, which we've seen a thousand times already on the show. I thought that um, opening shot where they show the leader of that planet where they talk to what to Paul talks to him. I, I could have swore that's the same set as the Dean Stockwell set. It looks exactly the same when he's sitting in the chair. Was. Yeah, it's yeah, like it was probably the same one. Hmm. But yeah, uh, they 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 mix it up a little bit. The only the only question I have is I do not understand how he got out of his handcuffs. He just they just sort of like pan down and he just goes clink and he's out. Are you talking um, about uh, the alien or art or who? Who are you talking uh, about? Cor- Corrado. Cor- 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 <laughs> um, well, he explains that he has the implant in his skin. Oh, is that what he says? Oh, I missed that part. Okay. Yep. Yep. You might have taken a bath. He has a he has a short scene. Archer asks him what he does. Yes, I, he was, said, I was taking a bath. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He points to his skin. He says he has a subdermal lockpick in his, in gotcha. his arm. Okay. I missed that. Sorry. Yeah. Uh it's I thought that they you know, it's it's a it's a lighthearted, or maybe not lighthearted, but it's a, it's a pretty light thing where the characters aren't fully fleshed out, and it's uh, very derivative of Con Air in a lot of ways. Uh, the Which, thing that, ironically enough, I just watched. Oh, really? Three days ago. I I probably haven't seen it in twenty years, probably, and we watched it uh, Friday night, and we watched Executive Decision the following night. So uh, I'm I'm well versed at this moment in uh, plane based action films. <laughs> Mark Ralston might be in both of those movies actually we just don't <laughs> recognize him. Yeah, I, I mean and this one seems a fairly effective plane based hijack type thing. It's it's funny cuz it's pretty derivative of a lot of enterprise episodes. They tend to repeat mm. things like this and down to the militaristic pseudo government type thing that's uh, the enemy or whatever. But you know, it's a very brown setting. It's mm-hmm. a low key setting. The criminals are sort of vaguely def- defined. What I think, I, why I think that I, what I take the point off for in Archer's final points, because I don't really have anything technically wrong with this episode. I think it's fine. I think it's very average. I think it's a three if you ignore the problems that I have with it. They, um, they're clearly going for a Guantanamo 
thing. And Mm -hmm. it doesn't make any sense, the Guantanamo angle that they're taking, because the character, the villain is not redeemed. The the villain is not in there for the wrong reasons, it doesn't seem. And Archer, weirdly and selfishly at the end, just makes the point that we're innocent. I didn't belong there. (laughs) Fuck that other guy. So it's it's weird that I was just expecting you're waiting for the moment where Mark Ralston's character is like, I was falsely imprisoned, they tortured me or whatever, and then you kind of have like a an idea of like this guy could be raging against that. It might be too early in Guantanamo's history to really realize that, but like you you feel that's the play. And the other weird thing about it is that in this Guantanamo relationship, the Enterprise almost takes the position of the American government in some way. So it feels. It feels um, pointed and like um, overly critical, I suppose, at that point. But they, they ultimately don't make a lot of issue out of it. So I don't know if it really matters. But it's I feel like if you're going to hint at it, you might as well uh, go all the way and then turn your narrative into something where the villain is defined by that. And it makes it a little bit right. more of an interesting story. Yeah, the, in, uh, the level of indignancy that Archer has with that final line... <laughs> You do kind of, it does kind of lose its uh, uh, poignancy when you realize he's only talking about himself. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and if you had Kuroger have that thing where he's like, yeah, he, he was falsely imprisoned and he, he's not going back. He refuses to go back. And, and then he dies. He, he becomes Archer's friend and dies during the course of the Enterprise episode. Like he's shot by the guards, you know, and then Archer's like mad at this guy, the bureaucrat, because well, his, honestly, his new friend died. I, I don't even think you need to do that. I think you could s- still have it go the way that it goes and have him have that anger that he has and have him refuse to get off the ship because he's refuses to go back to jail or whatever even though he was it's one of those things where he was falsely imprisoned but now he's definitely going to be really imprisoned right you know? yeah sure uh, or rightly rightfully imprisoned in that so he refuses to go back to jail so he crashes the ship or whatever and then mm. then then that level of indignancy is that a word i think Sounds good. Sure. I think so. Um, he's, he's being indigent. Yeah. That level of anger that uh, Archer has when he spits that at him, I think, would would stick a lot better Yeah. because he's just watched someone who's been not just himself and not just Trip. He's watched <laughs> someone who's been uh, whose life has been ruined by being falsely imprisoned and ultimately causes their death indirectly. I think I think the selfish aspect might be more why I hate the final line. How strange it is yeah. that like they they kind of drop crumbs that this is what I think the guy, the guy might have a thing where he was like I was imprisoned when I was very young for something, and he doesn't really ever say that he was innocent. I don't think, but it's kind of implied that there's this whole. It's more implied instead of through the prisoners. It's implied through the um, the bureaucrat has a lot of lines. He's like, hey, there's a lot of ships out there. We just arrest whoever mm-hmm. the fuck comes in. Right. Like, what are you going to do about it? Uh, and I think it's better if the prisoners have that point of view than the bureaucrat. It just seems like it's a missed opportunity. Yeah, I, the, Archer at the end, when you really kind of look at what he's saying and you realize it's about himself and not anybody else, it does feel like it feels like someone who forgot their keys and got caught outside in the rain. And then you finally let them in. They're like, you know, I was out there for 20 minutes. Right. Like, you, for, you forgot your You're keys. Right. Yeah, this doesn't have anything to do with anybody else. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think I think there's a little bit of tweaking they could have done with the situation on the ship. I don't need everybody on the ship to be no. to have some sob story. Um, I think you, as far as the people you do see, you get plenty. I thought the guy next to Trip was worked great, even th- uh, through the fact that he doesn't want to go. He still thinks there's a chance for them to get let go, so he lets he gives Kuroger the heads up so Trip can't shoot him. I thought yep. that was great. Um, then the nice yeah. scene afterwards where he's like, I saved you. You should be thankful for right, me. For, for right, yeah. yeah. That's that's a, a really well-drawn character, I think. Um, but yeah, I think I think just a couple tweaks. I don't think you need... Because they all, a lot of them have to be criminals because otherwise the takeover of the ship doesn't hold any violent weight. Right. Like, a right. lot of them have to be real criminals. And... Um, I don't think the show is even implying that everyone in Guantanamo is innocent. It's just the fact right. that someone can get caught up in this or whatever. But uh, I would have preferred Archer not to be. The, it's, it was just, it was strange to me. It's one of those strange enterprise decisions where the, the it's, 
It's not like you're breaking new ground with this episode or this story or this storytelling. So not having the villain be an innocent person, it's it's almost just like, you know, he wrote the script and someone gave them the notes and he's like, well, I'm not going to rewrite everything. I'll just rewrite the last line of dialogue here and right. that'll that'll be enough to do it. It's It just seems a little bit um, lazy and surprising, really. And yeah. I don't know if it would have been better. I have to assume it would have been slightly better if Kuroda was had a little bit of a story. You have a good actor there who can sell that kind of stuff. It's not like it's some B grade off the street uh, day actor player or whatever. It's someone who's been in movies and things like right. that. You, you think you'd give him something to do? Yeah, I and I yeah even even there, I don't think you need him to have like some big you know sappy monologue or anything. But I think just a, a few things to push him into that direction that he can really sell that uh, uh, that he's he's been wrongfully imprisoned in the past and now he's doing what he has to do to avoid being imprisoned um i think would go a long way and i think i think you're kind of you're kind of right with that final line where it's like it feels like they got the script and someone was someone said this is great but what does this really mean like how do we once we get back to the ship, what have we learned here, right? Because otherwise, it's just an, it's just action for action's sake, uh, and, and there's no no real theme or moral other than it's great that we got Archer back before they crashed the plane. Yep. Um, so they throw that line in there, but nobody took the time to go. Okay, that line's great, but what does that mean for the rest of the story? Now it just it it does feel like a in in addition in addition to give the episode weight but they didn't go back and and give the entire episode weight they just you know hung a hung a tag it 15, on there 15 pound weight on the end of it yeah and i i i found that to be i know i'm focusing on it a lot but i, I found that to be pretty annoying in terms mm -hmm. of the story like I, I honestly would have rather they not said anything and archer just leave and it's not so it's not so pointed that that's what Archer thinks. Like I, I kind of got that impression throughout it, but just the fact that Archer hammers it home selfishly and honestly too late, like literally it's mm. at the last second that he's, he starts mentioning things like that. It was just a, it was a, um, I thought his delivery of it was fantastic. His delivery is good. There was, yeah. there was, although there's some, there was some, uh, line of dialogue. I honestly can't remember now. I thought, uh, Bakula did a terrible line reading in one of these scenes too, but I can't remember what it was. So it was, it's an up and down game for him, I think. Mm. Um, but he's, he's good at the end. It's one of his few gravitas laced scenes. I think that he actually landed pretty well. Um, one thing I, one small thing that I really appreciated as an enterprise touch is that the, the people who hijack the ship, it is not universal knowledge how to fly a warp capable mm. ship, which is kind of yeah. neat because that, that makes sense for the timeline. And in the later series, anybody can just sit down at that terminal and punch in and like Jake Sisko could sit down and punch that thing yeah. and you'd fly to earth or whatever. But this guy on discovery, uh, on discovery, they would have uh, completely rebuilt the interface in, in right. <laughs> the time <laughs> sure of the scene cut. <laughs> I just thought it was a neat touch that he doesn't know how to use a warp yeah. ship to get around. It was kind of, it was kind of a nice, uh, it was a good way to add a little bit of conflict for Archer or a little bit of a narrative to device to get Archer out of there and into the cockpit. But it was kind of, it's a un, uh, universe building touch that I liked. Yeah, not everybody knows how to fly ships. And even people who do know how to fly ships don't know how to fly every ship. Right. It's yeah. not like Star Wars where everyone right. just knows how to drive. More acceptable in Star Wars. Star Trek feels a little bit more, you need to go through some kind of training course or something. Right. Um, right. The only, I mean... The Nausikans make their reappearance in this one. Just that yeah, Nausikan guy. From? I recognize the name. I can't remember the last time we saw them. Uh, they've been in an Enterprise episode. I forget which one. They, they were in the um, the Travis Mayweather focused one, Fortunate Son, where he meets the ship full of uh, guys sure. who are uh, like him, like a boomer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The Nausikans are the pirates in that episode. They're most famous for being the ones who stab Picard in the heart in his younger right. days and give him the fake heart. Um, um do you know who was playing that guy? Because I didn't look it up, but something about him seemed like maybe he was a wrestler. Or... Michael McGrady? Nah, I don't know. He is... He's in Trancers, Creator, Project X, Wife... I don't know anything about him here. I'll see if I can yeah, recognize I him from his picture. You thought he seemed like a wrestler in his delivery? He was pretty grizzled. Yeah, he just had... You know, he was a big dude, and the maybe I'm just 
maybe the makeup was just good enough that he uh his uh his uh intense vibe came across more yeah through it but I don't <laughs> he know. works it, he works a lot looking at his imdb i don't recognize him at all but he's been in a ton of tv so mm -hmm. he's he's working big guy no him. not not a wrestler um but they brought back the Nausikins for I guess I was just I thought there was going to be something more with just the early interaction between that guy and Trip where they were on each other for some reason. I guess they're just showing their general disagreement or mm -hmm. uh, the chafing between the two of them, but it's just an Austin, I suppose. What was funny about that interaction was like <laughs> it was almost it almost seemed like a misunderstanding cuz when he delivered that first line he was like if you don't want your food, you can give it to me. I was like, "Oh, that's nice." I mean, he's just that's he's not being a dick about it. He's not demanding his food. He's just saying, well, if you don't want it, I'll finish it if you don't want it. Yeah. <laughs> and then when Tripp says, no, I'm good, then he's like, give me your food. So he, you know, he wasn't totally an asshole. And then later on, Tripp is like, hey, we're buddies now. Can you help me out? And he's like, yeah, I guess. that's fine. <laughs> what, do you, what do you need me to do? Lean over where, with my back completely <laughs> exposed to you and pull on this? <laughs> you're going you're gonna to hold this hammer out and you need me to put my head underneath it? That's no problem. A lot of the... the Two two very similar scenes for some reason. The the oatmeal, are you gonna eat all your oatmeal thing was funny because it's the kind of scene that on ninety nine percent of TV shows, something happens from that oatmeal discussion. Like the you know, he gives it to him and he turns it into a bomb or something. Like the guy he does something to slap the prison guard with it or something, or mm -hmm. it, it leads into something. It doesn't here. And then also in the end when he asks the guy to uh, trip has to get a open the valve or whatever and he bends over and does it it happens so easily that when he hit him with the wrench it's like oh he's definitely just going to take the hits and stand right. up and be like now you're now you're fucked buddy but he he knocks him out with it so it's it's yeah. so it's so easy and strange yeah and i mean that guy i think that guy is just misunderstood because he seems to be willing to help when people ask him to help, he he's concerned about uh, the eating about habits of his, of his <laughs> yeah. because, you know, he's like, well, if you're not going to finish that food, I'll finish it. And then later on, he wants to make sure Kuroga is getting enough protein and yeah. nutrients and stuff. Yeah. And he's 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 even kind of concerned about it. he's like, I'm not hungry. And he's like, well, you haven't eaten in two days. I've been you I've really been paying attention. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so he might I mean, he might have been falsely in prison, too. He just seems like he's probably a good guy. Once yeah. You get to know him. It's just a gruff exterior. He's got resting right. bitch face constantly, but he's he's extremely positive. It's like that whole thing. ninety percent of people who who I am friends with have a similar story where they say, "When I first met you, I thought you hated me because you were kind of scary looking." I'm like, "Yeah, mm -hmm. I understand." <laughs> I once had you're, a friend you're... tell me. I may have said this before. <laughs> I once had a friend of mine tell me. <laughs> she goes, "You know, if I didn't know you and I saw you walking at me, I would probably cross the street." And I was like, "Thanks." Hmm. Amy always tells me, always tells me, uh, she always asks me if she, if she goes, don't you want people to like you? <laughs> <laughs> I say, no, what the hell would I want that for? Um, it's her most, I, what, it's her most cutting what context. What is the context? If, if I, if you, I, if what I, what have you just done? <laughs> I've probably told someone what I actually think about like sure. their, their thing. And, uh, Amy thinks it's too cutting or something. Sure, sure. Lines. But no, I, I don't I don't need that, honestly. <laughs> for for every, everyone listening, if you ever meet Wes and you ask him something and he says, can I be honest, just say no thanks and walk away. <laughs> say, don't you want to be friends with me to, to cut get, me off at the pass? You're going to get burned. I don't have much else to say about this episode. We The Enterprise... Uh, don't the you scene? want these episodes to like you, Wes? <laughs> the patrons and listeners are great. They are fantastic. <laughs> The the sequences on the Enterprise are interesting because uh, super workman like not a lot really happens, but I I enjoyed them at the same time. I found there to be a surprising lack of red tape in uh, cleaning this mess up because when Enterprise gets in touch with these guys, that guy is his first reaction is like, well, you know, there's so many smugglers and stuff around here, we just have to do what we have to do. I don't. I don't know if we're ever going to be able to find these guys. And then Topal's just like, I'll send you a picture. And the next scene is like, yeah, it's these two guys. Yeah. And then after that, 
after that they're 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 uh they're heading off to find the ship and she's like you're gonna come with us to make sure nothing else goes wrong right and he's like "Ooh!" and then they cut to him just there being like yep there's the ship up there we just got to get the ship we should be fine it was yep. just very uh for for having that element usually that person gives a little bit more pushback but he just seemed legitimately embarrassed that all of this happened yeah. which also kind of refreshing <laughs> he's another character actor that i cannot name but i recognize him I from a whole bunch of stuff recognize that guy I, I could not game him name him but i definitely recognize his him. name is holmes ars osborne but i i know i i know i've seen him he's been in donnie darko legend of ron burgundy uh oh, sure. that, that thing you do he's I think he's the kind of guy, the guy who always plays dad to some teens. That's his. That's his kind of casting. Yeah, um, I think I think he was the station manager in Anchorman. Oh, is yes, yeah, that would make sense. He was yeah. in Boston Legal. I'm just looking. At oh his. yeah, he's the dad. He's uh, the drummer's dad in that thing you do. He. Uh, uh, the oh guy right. Who runs who runs the store? The that, store. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's the, the Enterprise scenes are a lack of red tape it's it's also it's one of those sort of bare bones enterprise plot of like they string the guy along by being like i guess you'll accompany us now to make sure that nothing ever happens he's he's sort of bringing up all these vague problems that are going to happen and none of them really have any impact it's just that they Mm -hmm. have to get there in time to stop the ships from shooting this thing or whatever but um he was fine again it's another boring vaguely militaristic smuggler shipping magnate or whatever um i will spoil one comment here i'll read this comment now before we go to the end just because i thought it was uh good enough or or it brought up something that i thought was interesting i was wondering what you would have thought <clears throat> so kyle says Canamar, con air, but shit. Other than the largely unexplored connection to Guantanamo, Canamar is devoid of anything thematic or personal because it again pairs Archer and Trip in a situation in which neither character excels. Reed and Mayweather would be much better choices. It'd be fun to see the prim and proper Reed slum it on a prison ship, although he may enjoy his time in enclosed space with sweaty, sexually frustrated men. And why not? But why not choose the trigger-happy armory officer for the literal action movie plot? Mayweather would have had a more personal and conflicted relationship with his prisoners than the felt than the smarmy archer because his past as a regular Joe space trucker probably brought him into conflict over zealous police who monitor trade routes. Two yeah. out of five. Sure. I mean, and one of those dudes faces kind of look like a pineapple. So maybe he gets like extra close to him. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that I, would be that would be I think that's a good point. Change. They they yeah. stick Archer and Trip in a lot of episodes just because I guess because they're friends that they, they do all mm. these things together. But their Enterprise is really cutting its supporting cast short by only relying on those guys like Hoshi. Hoshi and Mayweather have one line each in this episode. And I don't think we've seen them for a, a very, very long time. It's not like they do anything. I just um. It's surprising to me that the it's it's maybe trying to get some kind of original series vibe going where they just mm-hmm. want a small core of the central cast members, but the way that they've defined Reed and Mayweather, they definitely make more sense to be the two that are stuck in this situation. Yes, but I don't know if if I don't know if Reed could pull it off. The Archer um, role, are you thinking? Yeah. If Reed, yeah, yeah. Because I think in order to pull it off, I think you need a different version of Reed, more like the version of Reed we've talked about we wish they had gone with. Mm-hmm. Um, someone who is a little bit more overtly action-based and and, uh, and whatnot. Reed is just so such a wet towel um, of a Reed character. doesn't strike me as intelligent enough to do the subterfuge plot that Archer yeah. has to do. Yeah. I actually, honestly... I would, if I was going to do that, I would probably put Mayweather in the Archer role, not yeah. Reed. Because I think Mayweather, going off of what Kyle was saying, would have more latitude to identify with these guys and kind of get on their level a little bit. If yeah. you do that, I think it would be a great episode for Mayweather. Yeah. And then you've got yeah. Reed. Reed dicking Reed. around in the back, trying to yeah. s- trying to stay alive in this uh, no holds barred Roman Coliseum of prisoners back there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, getting getting annoyed by the talky gross guy. Yeah. <laughs> Although I do have to say, I thought that guy was great, and and Tucker's uh, is it Trip Tucker. Yeah, Trip Tucker. Trip. So many first names. Uh, Trip's reaction shots, I thought, were really. I th- yeah, I guess that's enough for today. We'll call uh, call it the end of the day for Canamar. 
We will play a clip from the episode. We'll come back, read some patient thoughts, and give our final thoughts about Canamar. We've got some men in there who could use your help. And you? I'll be fine. On behalf of the Enolian government, I'd like to extend our apologies for this inconvenience. My superiors will sure. want... Uh, Captain. Captain, my superiors will want a report on... I'll give you one right now. Kuroda's dead, the other 11 prisoners are under guard. As you're aware, my engineer and I were falsely arrested. We almost wound up in Canamore. Makes me wonder how many others don't belong there. You wanted a report? You've got one. Thank you very much for listening to the show today. Thank you for supporting the show, especially if you want to support the show. You can go to patreon.com slash the Penske file. And the best way to do it is to give a couple dollars a month to that website. We get it. And then we can create more content and you can vote on the polls about what we more cover. We just content. did Inception. Inception from 2010, I think, the Chris Nolan wow. movie. Man, we did Life Support. I can't believe that movie is 10 years old. I know. I might be wrong, but I think it's 2010. Uh, I think you're um right. Life Support, we recovered the DS9 episode, the third season DS9 episode. We revisited that in another podcast that's exclusive to the patrons. And um, that's basically the best way to support the show and show that you care about whatever we're doing here, which is something, I suppose. Thank you very much, guys, for supporting the show, and thank you for listening. And as always, our Captain Tier supporters get a special thank you. Special thank you, go. I'll go with a different order here, so excuse me if I screw up the names. But Ben Douglas, Tark Latif, Joint Mango, Kyle Barrett, Mike Burnett, Matthew Ross, Cardinal Doomsday, Andrew Cholog, Nathan Elliott, Sammy Custer, Matt Cutler, Eric Johnson, Nick Sergi, Brigham Santo, Sean, Christian Pouch, Bradley Killens, Dwayne Hackett, Darth Moss, Chris Tinsley, Kevin Reyes, Jordan Cooper, Vault 13 Hero, Rune Bendler, HH28, Mad Curry 6, Nick the Rat, Stefan Minton, Derek Zajac, Paul Roscoe, Jacob123, Point Extra G, Groppler, John Zorn, Mike Harris, Dave Davies, Eric Sanjuan, Kevin Lowry, Captain Brazen, Jakey's Gamer, Patrick Seba, Corey Martin, William Scheisler, Soylent Blue, and G- uh, Zane Majors. Thank you very much for supporting the show, guys. And now we'll go to your thoughts. If you're a uh, patron, you can leave your thoughts about upcoming episodes and we read them. I got to get to the start here. Where is it? There it is. Matt Ross says, Canamar, why take the weakest, smallest, least crewed vessel out to a conference? And what does Enterprise do during that time that the captain is away? Laundry? Anyway, you can see from this, uh, you can see this from a Shawshank Redemption mile away prison riot. More so as our chief bad guy is Boggs from the Shawshank and the killer Lieutenant Pierce from TNG's Eyes of the Beholder. Oh, interesting. I guess he is that, isn't he? Yeah. Again, Archer talks too much and just keeps digging a hole in his stories, but I did want the bad guys to kiss after the exchange over food. Two out of five just for good behavior. Did, um... Is Archer good at... uh, pretending to be somebody else? Uh, I thought he was fine in this one. So he was okay? I yeah, gotta, I thought his story was was believable enough. Yeah, he doesn't. I don't think he trips himself up. I um, I can't tell if it's one of those things where the script thinks that he's okay, or the script thinks that he's bad, and Bacula in his portrayal is like, well, I have to show that he, I'm acting. You know, I have to show that I'm not really believing I'm a smuggler. So sure. I have to kind of play it like, yes, I was there, <laughs> and it kind of squints yeah. at him. It's, it's 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 that kind of a thing. That's I think, what I did. Remember in um, that's the ticket. In Gambit, the TNG two part to Picard. You probably don't remember, but Picard pretends to be well, I a. Thought sm- you meant the mini series about the X Men that came out in the nineties. Picard pretends to be a, a rogue, and when the Enterprise finds him and he has to keep up his his like roguish uh, persona, it's mm-hmm. the worst acting from Patrick Stewart possible. But it's intentional because he's <laughs> you know he's trying to be this roguish character or whatever. But right. it, it reminds is me it, of that. Is it better or worse than when he shows up? Oh, with the eye patch in the acting like the French it, guy in the it's better than the um episode. Stardust City Stardust City rag. <laughs> oh, hello, c'est bon. oh my god. Welcome, fellow bad men of which I am one. <laughs> never... Are there crimes for us to commit? <laughs> people never just never forget people that seven hooked up to the board cube and sucked them all out into space and then detached from it two seconds later. I will never yeah. forget that moment. Great show. Great show. Um, 
Nick the Rat says, Canamar, if Burnham didn't save the Enterprise in the last episode, this one would never have happened. Canamar really showed off Scott Bakula's acting chops, the expression on his face when they were wrongly being held and how it looked when he was being let go, and then how it looked when he was pretending to be a smuggler. The range. I know. I now want to write a fanfic that kelp faced aliens and Tilly... Uh, about that kelp-faced alien and Tilly having a conversation. Strangely enough, while re-watching this forgettable episode, I remembered it. And for that, I give it a two out of five. Can't wow, I'm surprised that it's so low on this one. Everyone, so a two, two so far. Kyle gave it a two. I read his comment, so I'm just yeah. going to skip over him again. He said Con Air, but shit, I think. Con Air, but shit, yes. And then yeah. he talked about Mayweather. I would Mayweather. argue that Con Air also is not that great itself, so. Yes, yeah, that's... <laughs> <laughs> Although it's going for different um, expectations, true, I suppose. True. A Latte Librarian says, anyone else have the song Panama stuck in their head from this episode title? Just me. Also, is Archer more convincing as a smuggler than as a Starfleet captain? I can't believe they never followed up with a chatty seaweed face alien at the end after spending all that time with him. Three false arrests out of five. There's a lot of kelp face aliens. I, I, I think uh, Nick the Rat was saying that too. I was thinking of uh, Saru when he was mentioning it, though. I guess they're, they're right. talking about the uh, the Fisher the the fish earrings chin guy. Groppler John Zorn says, "Canamar, yes, perhaps, but Shudamar. This episode of shittiness uh, should be taken in the context of the television industry in this franchise." <laughs> <laughs> That one tickled you, uh, girl. Well, uh, I don't know why I found that so funny. <laughs> Uh, I'll start over. This episode's shittiness should be taken in the context of the TV industry and this franchise struggling to remain relevant in a political landscape that was rapidly removing itself from the Star Trek core message. Jabs at social commentary often fail to land in a world in which waterboarding was just entering the public debate. With this episode, we end up with a cardboard villain and a clunky plot setting up Archer's final line wondering about how many others have unjustly ended up in Guantanamo. While the show would find its voice in the season three Zindi arc, most had stopped watching by that point. It's a high two. Hmm. Damn. Uh, Captain I mean, Grace... I don't disagree with anything that he's saying. I'm just, that's uh, surprising that the, I don't know. I thought it was better than that. But Let I... me read this and then you you can maybe think about what, uh, sure. what you think. So uh, this is Captain Brazen set to the tune of Oh Christmas Tree. Oh, Canamar, oh, Canamar, your plot is dumb and dreadful. The prison ship, the crew must go, a parallel to Guantanamo. Oh, Canamar, oh, Canamar, your plot is dumb and dreadful. Although two annoying fishhook aliens and terribly delivered political commentary, you'd rather just shoot out of an airlock out of five. So we got pretty much straight twos for that yeah. one. Why would, do you think that all, is? First of all, I would like to say it's still November, but I'll allow it. Mm -hmm. It's post Thanksgiving. Uh, that's that's the earliest yeah. you can possibly do something like that. Yeah. Did I get the um, tune to a Christmas tree right? I was confused about the second line. I might I might have been off a little bit. Don't, no, don't judge think, my yeah, vocal performance. It. Okay. <clears throat> you put it down, 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 down. All right. They uh, all give it twos out of fives. Yeah. Uh, that's I'm. I mean, I I guess I I can see why, but it's as as a I don't know as an episode of TV. I thought it worked pretty well. Um, but again, I, I don't disagree with the fact that there is a lack of substance because there tends to be a lack of substance on this show full stop yes i if not for that last line i would have also i would have given it a three i'm going to give it a two because i'm uh, like i just have to because i don't like that last line and i think it speaks to the bigger problem with it but as we said earlier i thought it was the best action-based episode they've done maybe like yeah, and I have to give them credit for that. I would have, I would have said it's a thoroughly average episode, but I'll give it a two just for consistency's sake. I think, although it's a high yeah. two, if that matters. Yeah, like that whole that whole sequence at the end when they're docked again, much like executive decision, when they're docked to the ship and they're going into the the dive and everything's shaking around. I mm -hmm. thought that stuff was great. I thought it was legitimately well done. Um, I like the villain's final oh, well, moments too, where the the ship is yeah. in the decaying orbit and he's just kind of looking out the window at it. It's nice. Yeah, I uh, uh, I also forgot to bring up the um, the ship that they commandeer. That's another piece of like what should be an obstacle, but they just get by apparently very easily, right? Because they find the ship that's going to pick them up, and then sometime off screen, they pull the I don't know the Michael Burnham number six or whatever. And uh, just get that ship for themselves. I guess yeah. you don't. You don't really need to see that stuff because it 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 breaks the the fun of the the 
the surprise flow. when they open the door. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, that's true. Yeah, but yeah, I you know I think it's I think it's pretty good as far as uh, an, an action adventure episode of Enterprise goes. Um, I'm going to give it a three just based on that alone. I think because these episodes um they can lose my attention when they don't have a point and they are not particularly engaging and regardless of whether or not this one's point really sticks i think it is i think the story they're telling on on the surface is is fairly engaging so yep. <laughs> it kept my attention so it was a three <laughs> is what i guess i'm saying we're redefining the scale of 1 to 5 I, I would agree. I don't. This is not one of the worst of the season, really. Mm. Um, don't know if a two would make the worst of the season. We've had a couple ones, but yeah, I. Um, it's encouraging that maybe they're just getting better at the action stuff, and it would be nice if they layered in a better narrative on top of it. But I didn't think that this one was particularly bad. I'll still give it a two. Clay will give it a three. Thank you very much for listening, guys. Thank you for leaving your thoughts, patrons. Thank you for supporting the show as well. You can go to Patreon.com/slash The Penske File if you want to support the show. Clay, do you have anything you want to say? Uh, we got a new badass tomorrow, which will be Riddler's Reform and Second Chance. Ooh, did that off the top of my head, too. Uh, which are uh, continuing the th third season of Batman the Animated Series, which is uh, episodes where villains try to turn it around, either sincerely or insincerely. Um, they're, they're, they're two pretty solid episodes. I would say, say check them out. We're coming up to the end of the season on that, so... Uh, that'll be that'll be fun what we what we go to next um and we've got it on rotten horror picture show from last week and then next week rotten horror picture show is you know what i forgot i think it might be uh i don't know something scary <laughs> it's not black christmas it's no before... it's not black christmas it fuck what the hell is it I can't remember what i can't remember what movies we rented recently oh well yeah, I forget. We we do have Black Christmas will be coming up. Uh, we uh, we'll have an episode coming out the Wednesday before Christmas, and that will be 1974's Black Christmas. So you get that to look forward to. Guys, thank you very much for listening. You can check out all the shows. Oculus, Oculus. I believe Oculus. It's Oculus. That, that would make sense. Yeah, with uh, yeah. my memory. Um, thank you very much for supporting the show. You can check out all the other shows at thepenskyfile.com. The Penske Podcast is the Star Trek show, and then you can subscribe anywhere or just YouTube. Stick to YouTube if you're watching that. Otherwise, all the podcasts are apps. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you for supporting the show. We'll see you later.